Welcome to this presentation from the Downey Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are located in the greater Los Angeles area at 9820 Lakewood Boulevard in Downey, California. We would love to have you worship with us any Saturday you are in our area. Today's message is Mother's Love. Now, here's Pastor Carey. Praise God. Praise God. Today we are here on the Sabbath day celebrating our women in our church, our mothers, and we're celebrating and worshiping God. It's a good day. It's a good day to be here. So, well, let's just begin. Let me pray here. Father, Lord, thank you so much for um, today. Thank you for the Sabbath. Thank you for each person that is in here. Um, we pray, Lord, that you um, just continue to open our hearts and open our minds to, um, to as we recognize and honor um, uh, the women in our life, the mothers that are that are in our life, Lord. We, we also recognize um, the love that we've experienced um, from them. Is, is represents the love that you have for us as well, Lord. And teach us right now, Lord. Um, help us to see not only how you, you do so much for us, you've created us, you provide for us. Help us to recognize that you, um, um, everything that you do um, as we, Reflect on what our moms do for us as well. Thank you, Father, for your love. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, mother's love. You know, sometimes this is a, you know, a confusing conversation sometimes because not, like, like Celine said, not all mothers are perfect. And... Um, and so, but at the same time, we see the representation of what it means for a mother um, and, the, and what it means to, to provide us life and to, to give us love and to, to, to raise us up. And so we, um, so today we are talking about the mother's love. In Isaiah 66, 13, it says, as a mother comforts her, Child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. Um, Isaiah the prophet is, is rest assuring God's people, and, and here's the, the people of Jerusalem, and, and that, that God is going to take care of you, um, comfort you, be with you, just as your mother has been with you, or as a mother has been with you. So we have this great analogy of, you know, the, the greatest analogy of, of God's love is truly a mother's love for his child. Willing to do whatever. Self-sacrificing and always providing for it. One of the great examples, um, this is a picture here. It's called the answered prayer. And this is, um, um, this is a... Uh, dedicated in honor to, to Augustine uh, back in the 4th and 5th century. He was a wild child. I mean, we don't think of or know much about Augustine now, but he, Augustine created, um, you know, what we understand as theology in many ways. He was just a, a, a great man. But at first, he was someone who was wild and crazy, and his mother stood and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for this person. And eventually he becoming um, the godly person that he was and the influences he has. As we have all seen in our own lives, you have had mothers who have prayed for you or you have been a mother who has been praying for your child. You see the great and amazing love that God has for you. It's, you see that to know that there is one person in your life that was always with you. That's, that's what we see from a mom. And that's what we see and we think of what God is like for us. Always there for us. Always willing 
to do whatever it takes. Um, that's the representation of, of who God is. And so we, we, we realize that. We see that. And we honor our mothers because of, of, of all the things they do. And, and we have one weekend to do that, but which we probably should be doing this every day, right? Amen. 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 So what, we, um, what I want to do, though, today is we can reflect on the character of what a mom should be like and all of this and how, to, how they um, represent God. But I want us to think about what we can do to show our love to our moms, all right, or to the women in our life, right? So, and it says, how to love your mom the way your mom and God love you. All right, so I, I, I went on and I looked online and I saw this page. It said, eight ways to show love for your mom. And I found, I took five of them. Four, three of them I didn't have, I couldn't do, I didn't do. I, go take them outdoors, take them hiking. That was one of the ways to show love, right? Or one way is to get, get rid of your mom, I don't know, but. Um, <laughs> so, and then another one was, um, uh, uh, write a story to them and, and so on. But here are, the, here are five of the eight ways to show God's love for you. Okay, so um, number one, cook a brunch, right? Right, this is, um, this is the number one way to show, um, that, to show the love that you have for your mom is by making them food. And you realize why this is so special to them, because guess what? That's a day that they don't have to make you food, right? It gives them a rest, a break. But, but it shows, you know, in, in, in the Psalm 34, 10, it says, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good things. So not only do we see what moms do for us and, and, and cooking a brunch would be such a, a nice gift for her because that's what she does for you. But that's what God does. He's always, always providing for us. Amen? Amen? You know, pat yourself right here. I bet most of you that pat yourself there know that God has provided for you <laughs> abundantly, right? <laughs> abundantly, God has provided for you, right? Praise God for that. Amen, right? Uh, so, so the first thing we can do is show thankfulness to, to, to our mothers by cooking them lunch because, or brunch because that's what God, that's what they do for us, and that's what God does for us. Number two is scrapbooking. Men must love, um, I'm a man. How many of you love scrapbooking men, right? For some reason, women love scrapbooking. And it's, well, not all, huh? But, 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 but there's a reason why. It's, it's not just, you know, they like the beauty of uh, putting something nice in this, but they, the pictures, they want to remember the different stages of life knowing that this is my child as a baby and is growing up to be in kindergarten and on to throughout elementary school and into um, junior high, high school, and college, right? The mother remembers the life of their child. Just like in Psalm 115, 12, it says, the Lord remember us and will bless us he will bless his people, Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. God knows every hair that's on your head, right? Knew you before you were born. He remembers you. It's, you know, it's such a beautiful thought. To, you know, we think, you know, you know, at times in life, no one's thinking about we. We're forgotten. You know, some of us whose mothers have passed on, have, have lost a, a, a huge part of their life, but we have God, right? Every aspect of what's going on in our lives, everything 
that is happening to us. Every painful mem- thought we have, every joyful moment we have in life. You know, I was just talking to my mom the other day, and I was telling him, you know, there was a, there was a guy in my, in my um, growing up, he used to beat me in basketball for three years straight. We'd play almost every day, and he beat me every single day, right? And then one day, I beat him. What did I do? I ran straight to my mom like I just won the Super Bowl, right? Or I guess the NBA champions, right? And we're just reflecting on these moments, right? You do that with your mom. You just go back and you think of the stories and the, and, and, and the life experiences that you have. God is there with you every step of the way. He remembers every aspect of your life. And he's, he more than remembers. He's guiding you and caring for you. And those are the things we learn from our, our, our moms. So the number two greatest gift you can give to your mom is scrapbooking, according to this website. But it also gives us a sense of the way a mom thinks and the way God thinks for us. Number three, frozen yogurt. Um, and, you know, reading it, you know, I was thinking frozen. You know what's really good is have you ever had tofu ice cream? That's really good stuff, right? It is pretty good, right? right? I thought you guys would all laugh at me at that one. But, um, but OK, so number three is frozen yogurt. And it isn't so much the yogurt that they, they love. It's the opportunity you going with them and spending time with them. And Hebrews 13, 5 says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content um, with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. God wants to, is always with us. And we, he's always with us whether we know it or not. But we can look up and acknowledge that he's here, right? That's what the Sabbath is all about, right? Spending time with him. So, so number three, best gift to give to your mom is not really just about the frozen yogurt. It's spending time with him. Because God spends time with us. We, we learn that aspect. Of number four is write a poem. Um, one of the things is, another thing, sometimes we may not be very good at poetry. So what do we do in replacing this? We give them a card, right? Mother's Day, apparently, we spend $671 million a year on cards, right? But this is saying, um, is, is, this is, mothers want to hear these words, beautiful words coming from you. And um, so this is the number fourth greatest gift you can give to your mom. But in Psalm 5, um, five through, I think it's 5, it says, So is my word that goes from my mouth. It will not return to, be, to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose which I sent it. There is power in words, an expression of love. When we show and say, Mom, I love you, it has this, this, this great meaning to it. Um, but at the same time, God, you know, I, re- I remember when I was, um, you know, before I um, was g- gave my life to the Lord, I had this guy whose name is Daniel, I've shared before. He, um, during construction, I would do construction. And, um, and everybody in my life, every, all the relationships in my life were kind of harsh. But this guy would come up to me and say, yo, man, I love you, man. And those words would just mean so much to me, right? I mean, it's like, it, it, ha- it had such an impact on my life. And think about the words that you say to people. 
um, what comes out of your mouth? And, and, and how often is it positive? How, much, how often is it uplifting? Or how much often it, it shares how you really feel with the words? Um, so number, the fourth greatest gift that you can give to your mom is words. The right, the nice things to say. And God gives us words. All right, number five. Shopping. That's probably the greatest gift, right? Yeah. Amen. Oh, man. A lot of times you go shopping and you see there's this seats for all the men that are sitting there, right? And the women and their children are having a great time shopping. And this is like um, the same thing as cooking brunch. What is moms doing shopping? They are buying you stuff, right? They're buying you new clothes. They're buying you new um, shoes. They're buying you new things. They, they love to provide and give gifts and, and, and take care of you. We have Philippians 4, 19, and it says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Right? We see this, the, the effort, you know, okay, pat your belly, don't, you don't have to do that. Now see the clothes that are on you. And as if you're a man, most likely you didn't buy it yourself. <laughs> well, it may be, that's not true. But if you were a child, you remember this. You see the, the, the painstaking effort that your, your moms do to make sure that you are, you are taken care of. Right? So you see this gift of going shopping with them is, signifies you are understanding what they are, what they are doing for you. And you're enjoining them and, and including um, doing what they um, do for you all the time. But really, the final greatest gift for mothers Celine had asked, um, asked the, the kids, what can you do for your moms? And one boy smartly said, be good, right? What do moms ultimately want? John 3, 1, 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. The great, well, you can cook them brunch that would be beautiful and amazing. You can write them a poem. You can go shopping with them. You can go have ice cream with them. All these things are, are wonderful suggestions for you to celebrate Mother's Day. But ultimately, they want to see their children to be, to love the Lord to do his right in life, to be the person that God has called them to be. Amen? Amen. That is the ultimate best gift we can give for our, our mothers. So mothers, you know, or guys and the rest of us, this is our suggestions to how to celebrate for our mothers. Let's do that. Let's cook them brunch. Let's take them shopping. Let's... Um, what else did we have? Right, frozen yogurt. Write a poem. But ultimately, let us be the people, not just to our, for our mothers, but for God. Let us be the people that God wants us to be. Let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you so much for this weekend. Thank you for the blessings of life that you give us. Thank you, Father, for the love that we experience. While not all of us have experienced, um, um, well, none of us have experienced love and its, its purity from the world around us. And while our mothers made mistakes at times, but they, they've done so much for us in our lives, Lord, 
it often ultimately reflects the mother's love reflects the love that you have for us but you are perfect incapable of making mistakes you have agape love for us unconditional love and father help us lord Help us to, to sense um, what you have done for us through our moms, through, through, through our lives. Help us to see the workings that you always provide for us, that you feed us. You're always spending time with us, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your love. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.